of signs, I think, so far seems quite simple, and it's been designed to be that way. The early uh, work of developing it, I think you kind of see how we used the height and found the law of signs, and then it kind of the height disappeared, and we get this nice little uh, proportion. Law of signs, easy. Then we kind of proceeded where uh, all of the questions that we had had two angles in them, and we found that solving those were quite simple. Um, well, this is where we step into a little bit of the more difficult. I'm going to do my best to explain what is called the ambiguous case of the law of signs. And ambiguous means the unclear or um, the one that uh, may exist. So unclear, uh, ambiguous is, is kind of synonymous, okay? Let me back us up a little bit to talk about um, the idea of a congruent triangle. We have some congruence relationships here. And I want to show you how certain uh, given information guarantees congruence. So what we just did in the previous worksheet, if you went back to it and looked at it closely, you'll notice that, that the triangles that were being given all had two angles and a side. Now in truth, that means that those triangles, when they're created based off of two angles and a side, whether it's the included or not, would guarantee that that triangle is identical, uh, it's a congruence, you cannot make it in any other way. And when the data is given in that manner, the law of signs works super easily, and that's what you experience. The reason it works so well is if you have two angles, you actually indeed have the third angle for free. So really, when I give you two angles and a side, no matter the order I give them to you, you would obtain all three angles because the two angles give you the third one for free. So all three angles are then automatically known. And then they give you a side. Now, I don't know which side. Was it the included one? Was it the one outside? But actually, once you have all three, you're going to know one of the sides. And I don't know which one it is because I haven't drawn the diagram and so on, but one of them will be known and immediately you have what is needed for the law of signs to work, which is that beautiful pairing of an angle to its opposite side. So to this point, what you did without even thought and didn't know that it was going to get trickier uh, is that you were working in a worksheet that provided all of this. Now, what happens if we didn't provide any angles at all? Side, side, side is a relationship that gives you congruence, yes, but does it work for the law of sines? And the answer is no, it doesn't, because if I give you three sides, you have no knowledge of angles, and so there is no magic pairing that's required. So this guy will need a something new, which is coming called the law of cosines. But anyways, for now, you'll need something new. The same uh, problem comes from side angle side. Side angle side, you say, well, there's an angle and so on. If I give you information in the format of a side, let's say this side, this angle, and this side. You'll notice that there is no pairing there either. I know the angle, but I don't know its opposite side. I don't know the angle, I know its opposite side. I don't know its angle, I know its opposite side. So in that manner, also, we're going to need something new, and that's coming very shortly. But even though those triangles are a congruence relationship, meaning that it, they definitely make one triangle, this law will not help us in those cases, if that's the form of the information provided. This brings us to angle side side, the word that every teacher, when they write it on the board, says, you can't say that word in a certain way, it's got to be angle side side. Some teachers avoid it by going side, side, angle. But anyways, uh, I put a one and a two because it distinguishes side one and side two. 
And so what they're referring to is if you knew the angle, and then a side, and then a second side. Now this uh, is a relationship that can be used in the law of sines. Take a look. That pairing will always take place between the angle and the second side. No matter what way you go, if you went angle, side one, side two, you'd still have that pairing. So this can be used in the law of sines. So let's say we call this A, B, and C. Um, then this would be little a and little c, so it would be sine of a, uh, we'd have little a, and we'd have little c. And so, yes, we would have three of the four items. But, angle side side is a slippery slope. This is not one of these guaranteed congruence postulates, which means if I give you an angle and two sides, we don't always make the same triangle. So, thus, the ambiguous case.